Welcome to another tutorial by Longhorn Physics. In this tutorial we're going to talk about the speed of light and give some uh, different values for it in different units and actually do a calculation uh, using the speed of light. So again, put the big C there to indicate that that is a symbol used in physics for the speed of light. Uh, you've heard of Einstein's famous equation, E equals MC squared. And so we use C for speed of light in physics. Uh, so here's your miles per second value. And for calculations, uh, especially in my high school class, we use 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And 670 million miles per hour. Uh, that means light travels around the Earth about 7.5 times in one second. Boy, that's fast. Okay, so here's a couple of problems using the uh, speed of light um, to complete our calculations. We have an object that gets hit with gamma rays with the length of 0.03 nanometers. What is the frequency of the wave? So again, the equation we use for finding out the frequency would be lambda, which is your wavelength, times your frequency, and that's equal to the velocity of the wave. But of course the gamma ray travels at the speed of light, so we would actually be able to substitute that. And all I do here is I use the math triangle. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, uh, your math teacher uh, will probably go over it one day and I like to use it whenever possible in making the physics calculations easy. Basically, you put the letter by itself in the equation on top of the triangle and the other two variables go on the bottom makes it easy to calculate. You, if you're looking for the corner, you divide these two. If you're looking for the top, you multiply the bottom. makes it easy for uh, beginning students to see uh, the so-called algebra in the problem. So we're going to use it to solve this problem. So the frequency here is what we're looking for. We know that's going to be in Hertz. And then we have our speed of the ray, which is traveling at 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And again, in physics, we always use meters per second when we're working with our equations. And then lambda here, we're going to have to make sure we know what nanometers mean. Nanometers means 10 to the negative 9 meters. So on one meter stick, you would have 1 times 10 to the negative 9 meters. Really small. In our second equation, we'll uh, figure out how much energy, according to Einstein, what could be produced by one gram of matter. Uh, and again, we know these C is in meters per second. You're going to want to make sure that you only square the speed of light when you're doing the actual calculation. Energy in physics is always in joules, and we always use kilograms. So the grams here is just to show a small amount uh, of matter here, but we had to convert it by dividing by a thousand. So here's the uh, solution to our two problems here. You see, set it up here so you can see the arithmetic. So we're going to have to divide the speed right here, 3 times 10 to the 8, divided by the f uh, wavelength to get our frequency. So we got 3 times 10 to the 8, divided by 0 0.03 times 10 to the negative 9. Now just a uh, Friendly reminder, you're going to need to make sure you use your calculator correctly. I like to teach my students to use the uh, second EE button uh, in the calculator. So if I were to punch this in on a, let's say, like a TI-30, I'd go 3, second button, and the EE button, then you press 8, and then you divide it by 0 .03, then I'd go second EE, and then you'd have to use, hit the minus first, then the 9, and then you hit equals. And on your screen, you'll see 1 times a little 10 there and then a 19 is uh, your final answer. The end frequency is always in hertz. So to figure out how much energy could be produced theoretically here, we have energy is going to be in joules or kilograms is 0 0.001 times, and here's where you need to be careful, is times 3 times 10 to the 8 squared, and you're only going to square the 2. So in your calculator you do 0 0.001 times 3 second EE 8 
then you'd hit the X to the 2 button and then equals and then you'll see on your screen like a 9 with a little 13 that means you have 9 times 10 to the 13 joules if you are using a TI-30 calculator some you know the the in intro calculators uh, it's easy to change your calculator to uh, scientific notation you just go second DRG and then move it over to SCI and then you won't see a bunch of zeros in your answers if you're using the TI-80s and above then you'll go to the mode and that's easy to see on the screen to, to change it into SCI all the uh, tutorials by Longhorn Physics uh, are available um, in some kind of book format at a starstudyguide.com it's S-T-A-A-R studyguide.com there's a uh, Books for worksheets, very interactive. Uh, for example, this Physics 101. A lot of worksheets where you have to go through and practice all the units and know the uh, terminology. And then you finally get some uh, practice problems and it follows with a mini quiz. Uh, there's um, quite a few different types of physics books available at that website. If you feel that can that help you better, available in Kindle and by Amazon.